Hello, everyone, and welcome. Hola y bienvenidos. Thank you for continuing to join us here virtually on this 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. We are happy to be with you in your living rooms, RVs, or backyards. Wherever you are, God is there. It's that time of year for our children's Liturgy of the Word to start. All children ages 5 through 12 are invited to join us for a weekly reflection on the Sunday Gospel via Zoom. This is a wonderful way for the kids to continue to grow in God's Word, even if they can't always attend Mass. Sessions are about 30 minutes, and there are two options each Sunday, one at 3 p.m. and one at 4 p.m. For more info or to sign up, contact Melanie Bailey. You can find her information in our bulletin or on the parish website. Father Mike will be here on Wednesday to start the next part of his priestly journey with us. Feel free to reach out to him by sending him a card here to the parish or an email to fathermike at hnmparish.org. Don't forget that you are always in our prayers and we are with you in spirit. Our celebrant today is Father Chris. So let us begin our celebration in prayer for the quiet intentions in our hearts and for the mass intentions of our videotaping team here who bring the mass to you each and every week and we offer a special prayer for each of them. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And now we send you greetings of love, virtual hugs and fun and we invite you to join Candace and Joseph in our opening song. gather in faith this holy day in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The love of God, the mercy of Jesus Christ, and the peace of the Holy Spirit is with you. Good for us to gather together, being together, even though we're not physically in the same space, through the wonders of technology, we're able to be united as an H&M family, near and far. Asking God to continue to work with us, guide us, and support us. Asking our loving God as a God who challenges us, a God who asks us to take up our cross and follow. As we follow your lead, give us strength to be faithful. Give us strength to be focused on your mission. Lord Jesus, forgive us for the ways that we try to make carrying the cross more comfortable by numbing ourselves with our technology and pushing the needs of those closest to us out of our minds. Kitty. Christ Jesus, 
Forgive us for the times that we have been complacent, making happiness our main priority, making excuses for not responding to the needs of others, and for complaining about being bored as we sit and do nothing. Christe eleison, Christe eleison. Lord Jesus, forgive us for trying to pacify our consciences by giving just enough to feel good about ourselves, but not enough to inconvenience our lifestyles. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Almighty God, forgive us of our sins and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord our God, you are the way which leads to everlasting life. You know our weakness and our brokenness. You know our strength and our gifts, and still, you love us beyond measure. Thank you for giving us what we need, and thank you for taking away those things that keep us from living life fully in you and through you. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Let us listen well to God's word. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumph. All the day I am an object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak in his name no more. But then it becomes like fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure. The word of the Lord.
Lectura de la Carta del Apóstol San Pablo a los Romanos Hermanos, por la misericordia que Dios les ha manifestado, los exhorto a que se ofrezcan ustedes mismos como una ofrenda viva, santa y agradable a Dios. Porque en esto consiste el verdadero culto. No se dejen transformar por los criterios de este mundo, sino dejen que una nueva manera de pensar los transforme internamente para que sepan distinguir cuál es la voluntad de Dios, es decir, lo que es bueno, lo que le agrada y lo perfecto. Palabra de Dios. sisters and brothers, our Lord is with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself or herself. Take up your cross and follow me. Whoever, for whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for her life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his or her conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, friends, whenever you're tuning in to celebrate with us as God's people. You might remember that powerful story of Reverend Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the Lutheran pastor who was killed in a concentration camp in 1945, just before the end of World War II. In that consecration camp, there was a prisoner who escaped, and in an attempt to deter anyone else from trying to escape, prison guard said that another person must be killed. A Jewish prisoner was, stolen, was chosen, 
And the man began to beg for his life, stating he had a wife and a child. Filled with compassion, Reverend Bonhoeffer stepped up and said he would take that man's place in that firing squad. For the remaining, for the remaining weeks of the war, that man endured the ongoing terrible treatment in that concentration camp. And after he was liberated, he told the powerful story of Dietrich Bonhoeffer's sacrifice that still inspires us today. By his own admission, though, Reverend Bonhoeffer didn't always have such a fierce commitment to God and his service to God's people. In the early 1930s, before the war began, he wrote this about himself. I threw myself into the ministry with a very unchristian and a rather arrogant manner. A mind-boggling ambition made my life difficult and separated me from the love and trust of my fellow human beings. At that time, I was terribly alone and left to my own devices. Then something difficult happened, something that has changed my life. I came to the Bible for the first time. I had already preached several times, had seen a lot of the church, had given speeches about it and written about it, but I had still not become a Christian. I was very much an untamed child. I had turned this whole business about Jesus into an advantage for myself. I had also never prayed, at least not much and not really. It was from this that the Bible freed me. It became clear to me that the life of a servant of Jesus must belong to the church. It's a fascinating self-assessment about himself and his life and his attitudes toward ministry as a young, ordained man. But he honestly shared his moment of conversion when he found the Bible, when he found a renewed sense of who he was called to be and began laying a foundation for making that ultimate sacrifice for a man in a concentration camp he did not know. He needed to arrive at this place of surrender to God so that he could grow into the servant he was of God he was called to be. This concept of surrender is thematic in the lives of the people who devote our lives to God and God's people, and the characters of Scripture are no different as we have today. God called Jeremiah from a very early age to grow and become God's mouthpiece to the people. Recalling the beginning of the book of Jeremiah, he considered himself too young, inexperienced, didn't have the right words to say, lacking confidence about God, what, what, what God was asking him to do. And God assured him that he would be given the words to speak to whomever God would send him, and he would never be left alone in his mission. That didn't mean Jeremiah's life would be problem-free or that he'd have an easy time doing God's work. There would be numerous people who heard his words and would be amazed, and many others who derided him for boldly telling them they were not following in God's ways. And God induced him to speak God's word faithfully and wholeheartedly, and even though he'd be imprisoned for doing God's work. And we hear those words today, God honestly speaking to him the way God used him to speak to others. God, you spoke to my heart. You didn't tell me it was going to be this difficult to obey you. Even as I try with all my might not to speak of you, my inmost being cries out, and I can't hold it in. I must speak about your mercy and your care. He needed to surrender to his fears and reluctance into God's abundant care for him so that he could continue to do the loving, difficult tasks God asked of him. St. Paul probably had no idea what would be asked of him when he experienced his conversion to the Lord. As he identified as Jewish Saul, he gave himself wholeheartedly into persecuting Christians as he believed that Jesus was moving the Jewish faith into the wrong direction. After his conversion, he used that same zeal to proclaim Jesus Lord and Savior of the world, even to the point of being inspired to invite non-Jews into this loving relationship with God. He needed to surrender his own comfort and security because his heart was moved to express God's love and challenge anyone who dared to listen. As he sacrificed much in his life for this mission, he encouraged us all in our second reading today to sacrifice our very bodies and souls as a spiritual sacrifice to God. He urged people of 2,000 years ago and people of now 
not to surrender ourselves to the ways of the world, but open ourselves to what would transform our minds and hearts to what God is asking of us. Both Jews and non-Jews were redeemed by the sacrifice of Christ. Through Christ, we are able to make sacrifices of our lives of various types to boldly proclaim that all that we have and all that we are belongs to God. We also must surrender parts of our lives. Peter had major areas of surrender to discern this episode in Jesus' life with him. In last weekend's gospel, we heard Jesus praising Peter, being open to the amazing revelation from God that Jesus was God's son. And I have no doubt he's probably patting himself on the shoulder, feeling really good about himself because he had some special knowledge that the other disciples did not discern as of yet. But in today's episode, we see Jesus boldly warning his closest friends that one day, very soon, he'd go to Jerusalem, suffer at the hands of the religious leaders, even though people, those religious leaders and so many others were trying to hunt him down, that he'd suffer greatly at their hands and that he'd be killed. They probably just could not even understand anything else he was saying after that, because shortly after that he said, I will be raised up on the third day. They probably didn't get that. Peter, fresh off feeling good about himself, decided that he tried to be Jesus' staunchest defender and declared he'd never let anything like that happen to his Lord. Jesus, having just recently praised Peter, scolds him, telling him that he's thinking merely in human ways and not in God's ways. Get behind me, you're acting like Satan, trying to distract me from my mission. Peter needed to surrender his dreams and aspirations for what he hoped the Messiah would be to free the long oppressed people of Israel. He needed to grow to understand how Jesus was sent from God and would bring salvation to all humanity in ways he could never imagine. He needed to hope beyond what he could imagine that Jesus' suffering for us was part of the plan to continue teaching us about the surrenders each of us must make to put the life of Christ into practice. They, like us, are called to surrender ways of living and acting that we would not have otherwise accepted had we not taken on the yoke of Christ. While at times God's will and our wills can coincide, at other times God's ways are not our human ways. Friends, these stories of conversion, powerful reminders of the conversion that can happen in any life, yours and mine, hopefully inspire us today. We can recall Jesus from the very beginnings of his life was fully human as well as fully God. And as he grew in maturity, he continued to grow in his identity about what God might be asking of him. I know in faith he had complete free will to accept or deny what God was asking of him, to offer new life to God's people, to help all people grow in knowing God's closeness to them, to leave some of his aspects of life behind, like his ability to use his carpentry skills in order to get, dedicate his whole life to God's mission after he was baptized in the Jordan River, to gather helpers long ago and helpers like you and me today to continue God's mission that would continue long after Jesus knew he was going to die a violent death. Jesus was a simple layman who was never trained as a rabbi to lead God's people. He had new ideas about God which made him to be perceived by many as heaven sent and by many others as dangerously heretical. Among other things, Jesus needed to surrender his quiet life, his security when people misunderstood him, his choice to live a normal Jewish life, and any possibility he might live to a ripe old age. All of these he surrendered, even all these things that could have been part of his life to be able to answer his true calling as son of God. And as it's always wise for a homilist to do, we bring it back to us, our personal walk with the Lord. We are in the midst of a time when so many of us have, had, have been asked to make various sacrifices. We may be working from home, we may be working outside the home or with reduced hours or reduced pay. We may be considered an essential worker, but maybe not getting properly compensated for your sacrifices. 
We may be putting our own safety in jeopardy in the healthcare industry, fighting fires, cashiering in our supermarkets. If you're like me, we didn't get to say, see our loved ones in a nursing home or hospital before they died because of COVID restrictions on us. We may not have buried our loved ones through the church or with many friends and relatives around us. We don't have the use of all of our personal freedoms because of temporary laws placed upon us. We wear, ma we wear masks. We sanitize our hands more than we want. We, social uh, we socially distance from people when we'd rather not. We try to trust that such sacrifices and surrenders like these help us do the next right thing, which will help us live all, of, all live in faith well. We've surrendered these ways and in so many other ways for the love of God and love of our neighbor. We do so when we want to and when we'd rather not. We surrender in union with Father Bonhoeffer, Prophet Jeremiah, with Peter, Paul, and with Jesus, who needed to surrender parts of their lives so that we could all live a deeper calling, paying attention to how God needs us to live. We, like them, surrender these realities to answer our true calling as daughters and sons of God. We walk the journey of faith, somehow trusting that what we have surrendered in the past, what we're called to surrender now and in the future, are usable to God to form us into the people we are blessed to be. As we prayed in our psalm today, our souls are thirsting for God. And this thirst will urge us, prompt us, and inspire us to put our trust in God that such surrenders we're called to make will help us grow when we desire this growth, when we're a little more reluctant to walk the ways of Jesus. And so we begin this new week in faith. Faith in God, faith in our fellow women and men, faith that God sees all that's occurring and is still present and alive. Let's try to believe it with each surrender we make because God and each grace we receive from God to live in ways we could never have expected when we first said yes, let's continue to say yes and live it. Amen. As a people of faith, we proclaim boldly who we are, our identity as God's people. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Eternal loving God, you call us to have faith that carries the cross, that embraces death, that causes us to lay down our lives for the sake of others. This kind of faith leads to resurrection, to life renewed and overflowing. It is in this same faith that we offer you some of our cares, our concerns, and our needs. Our response is, Lord, we trust in you. Lord, Lord we, we trust, trust in, you. in you. 
for the unemployed and underemployed, especially those who have lost their jobs and health insurance due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we trust in you. For all educators, administrators, teachers, aides, parents, and students, especially for those feeling uncertain and anxious about the way this school year may unfold, we pray to the Lord. Lord, we trust in you. For healing in our neighborhoods and cities, that our hearts can be open to addressing issues of racism, discrimination, and injustice in our communities, and open doors that will lead to reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord we, we trust you. in you. For all who are sick and suffering, that God's healing love will strengthen them, remove their pain, and restore them to wholeness and refreshing the strength of those who care for them. And for those who have died, may they rest in your loving embrace and may their loved ones be comforted as they mourn. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we trust in you. We place before our loving God our own intentions and our needs. Perhaps some of those aspects of our lives long ago or even now, we are asked to surrender, to put in God's loving hands when we want to and other times when we haven't wanted to. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we trust in you. Lord God, we thank you for being a God who chooses to be in communion with us, who chooses to listen, hear, and answer our prayers. Guide us in faith this blessed day. Remind us of your devotion to us when following you is very easy, when following you requires us to carry heavy crosses. Hear the prayers we have offered this day through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, friends, that your sacrifice and mine may be made acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May the sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessings of salvation, that what we celebrate in mystery it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. Sisters and brothers, the Lord is with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and truly just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Almighty and Eternal God. We know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might be the means of our salvation through Christ who is our Lord. 
Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Santo, Santo, Santo es el Señor. Lord, you indeed are holy, and from the world's beginning you are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Touch and bless us, your people, this day. Guide us in faith in those areas of surrender and sacrifice you ask of us, those that help make us better people, those that really hurt and cut deeply, those that guide us to new life. Send that same spirit upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they will become the body and the blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your daughters and your sons. Though we were once lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest of love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Paschal Feast one last time with his friends. As he ate with them, he took bread, giving you thanks and praise. He blessed, broke, and shared that bread with them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the meal was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross. He took the chalice filled with the wine. He once more gave you thanks. He handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and a drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior. Save us, Savior. Savior of the world. Savior of the world. For by your cross. For by your cross. And resurrection. And resurrection. as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Passover and our surest peace. We celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And as a people looking forward to his second coming, we offer you our faithful and merciful God, the sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate God, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son. And grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as we partake of this one bread and one chalice, we may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to go, keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you. Saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, united with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, patroness of our parish and school, with St. Joseph, her devoted spouse, with the apostles, the martyrs, and the saints, and with our deceased sisters and brothers, we raise to your mercy. 
Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. support each other in faith. We have been engraced in many parts of our lives. Many of us, if not all of us, have had, been asked to make sacrifices, to surrender important parts of our lives for the good of others, things we wanted to surrender, things we had difficulties to surrender, things we want back, things that at times, have not helped us be our best people on the road to eternal life. We place all of this, the lives we have and we are, in God's hands as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from all things that are evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, glory are yours, now and forever. Friends, the peace of our Lord is with you always. We have peace in our lives. Let's share that with those we're celebrating this Mass with knowing we're sharing peace with you. him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Great. 
grace you are making us faithful Lord we remember you and remembrance leads us to just reflecting with our staff that have been putting on these taped masses for us. I think we're up to 22 this week, 21, 22, um, that we're happy to do with you and for you who cannot come to church, who may not feel the safest right now, who may be in a vulnerable state, who may just say, this is what I need for myself right now as we continue in this intermediary time between what was and what will be. And we pray the spiritual communion prayer knowing that while I have had the privilege of celebrating the Eucharist and receiving this Eucharistic food, you have received it well in your own spiritual way. Lover of our souls and gentle companion on our journey, we have opened ourselves to receive you in your fullness into the very depths of our souls. As you take root in us, stretch us beyond the boundaries of our minds and hearts. Increase in us as we decrease. May your holy presence in us be reflected in our thoughts, words, and everyday works of love, bringing light, healing, and compassion through us to our world in great need. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a few announcements. Thank you to the many people who celebrated our H&M life by participating in the food drive and bundle Sunday these past two weekends. Uh, the response, as usual, I should not be surprised, but I am, was overwhelming and abundant and very generous. On behalf of those people whom you served, uh, whom you will never know, with this food, with the clothing, with the small household items, thank you from their hearts to yours. Reminder, as Lonnie mentioned at the beginning of our celebration, to stay tuned for the Children's Liturgy of the Word, to sign up, uh, to have our children continue their ongoing and unfolding growth in our Catholic life. Uh, please sign up for your free tickets to come to church for the weekend Masses whenever you feel free to do so. That begins at 5 o'clock each Thursday, uh, and you can do that online. And, or by calling the parish office at extension 140, again, after five o'clock on Thursday. Honestly, we're approaching our capacity at some of our masses, and we wouldn't want you to be turned away because you didn't sign up. So if you haven't signed up, if you have this tendency to want to just walk in, like we usually do when we come to church, uh, please think about uh, finding a way to sign up after five o'clock on Sundays, knowing that we don't always put all of the tickets online, but uh, we put most of them online. Again, we wouldn't want to have you be turned away. And a thank you also for your ongoing support, financial support for the mission of our parish. We definitely need it to help keep things going here as we keep serving you. And it occurred to me, we have just in these past two weeks uh, had our two national conventions for the two major political parties. You may have as I have a party of choice, certain candidates we like or don't like, November is going to be here very soon. So hopefully these conventions are a piece of the research you and I need to do to determine whom we will vote for come November. Um, this priest would just love to tell you, vote my way. I'm not allowed to do that. We priests are have our own personal opinions, but we're not allowed to proclaim and demand that you vote my way. I'm going to just urge you, please vote. Uh, many of our ancestors lived and died and sacrificed and surrendered 
sometimes their very blood, for this right that we have in our country to vote. So continue doing your research in these upcoming weeks. Uh, discern who lives up to the values that you have and I have. My values may be a little different than yours. Uh, to be able to discern well and vote well, whether that's by mail, whether that's voting early, whether that's in person on November 3rd, please prepare to vote. Amen to that. And we conclude our prayer. Giver of every good gift, continue to fill our hearts and our minds with your love and your grace. Nurture us as a mother nurtures her young. Strengthen our faith and empower us to die to ourselves in loving service of those we know and love, and even those we do not want to know and struggle to love. This we ask and pray through Christ our Lord. Friends, the Lord is with you. May Almighty God bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Thanks be to God. taping and friends gathered in your homes, in your RVs, as we watch and pray, thanking God for the gift of Joseph, who has generally, thanking God for the gift of Joseph, who has generously shared of himself and his gifts to help enhance our liturgy these weeks of videotaping. Continue to touch him, continue to inspire him to be a man of learning, a man of faith, a man of seeking God's will for his life. May he go forth from us. May he continue to let the Lord unfold in his life and be able to allow him to put God's abundant life into practice. Remind him he always has a home here at HNM and that we're praying for him. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.